Hi everyone, and welcome to episode 5 of my Bluetooth in Action series. My name is James Langbridge, and today we'll finally be creating our first program. In the previous episode, we had a look at BGScript and how to write, compile, and flash BGScript applications. Today, we'll be creating a real-world application. So, what can we write? I can think of one application that might be useful. I used to travel quite a bit before, and while I loved to travel, there was one thing that I hated. The thought of luggage being stolen. Your precious laptop and tablet gone? Not the kind of thing you want before a transatlantic flight, where you've already seen all the films on your previous trip, leaving you eight hours to think about what happened. Let's think of an application that could help us out, using Bluetooth Smart. What if we created an application that allowed a mobile telephone to connect, but triggered an alarm once the link was broken? If your suitcase is out of range of your mobile telephone, then a buzzer starts beeping, or something to attract the attention of people around. Well, this is easy enough to do in BGScript, so let's try that out. We'll be creating a new application, not one based on the examples delivered with the SDK. That being said, I will copy an existing BGProj file from an example. So let's copy this one. Let's create a new folder called Applications. Inside a folder called Luggage. I'll copy the file in here. Rename it Luggage.BGProj and We'll edit the contents. We've already seen this file in the previous episode, but it's good to see what we need. The device is still a BGM111, so I'll leave the device tag as it is. The GAT file will still be called GAT.XML, so I won't touch that. The same goes for the hardware file. The source file, though, will be called Luggage.BGS, and the output file will be called Luggage.bin. We can save the contents. The first file specified is the GAT file, so let's do that one first. I've written the GAT file off-camera, and now I'll explain what I've done. I've listed a number of services inside the XML file. They correspond to the services that will be provided by the BGM module, not just the main functionality, but also advertising services. The first one, 1800, is available on all Bluetooth devices. It provides the name and class of the device. I've named it BGM Luggage, and provided an appearance of 512, the Bluetooth specification for a generic tag. Next, we have service 180A, the device information service. This provides data like the manufacturer name, the model number, and the system ID. I've put Bluetooth in action as the manufacturer name. That's going to be the name of the startup that will create these devices. The model number string is Luggage Safe. That's a product that will bring me in millions. Finally, the system ID string is a little more complex, and I've copied what Silicon Labs used in the BGM111 example. Next, we have the Link Loss Service. This is a service that will issue warnings if and when the Bluetooth link is lost, which is exactly what our device will do. It doesn't take a lot of parameters, as you can see. The question here is, how did I know what to write? How did I come up with the fields and values? They weren't random. Well, I know that every Bluetooth smart device needs a generic access service, but after that, I can never remember exactly what is needed. So I look at the Bluetooth site. Keep a bookmark somewhere handy, you'll be using this a lot. As you can see, I've opened up quite a few tabs. There's a lot of information here. The services specification page lists the services available in GAD. Let's take a closer look at the generic access. Click on the generic access to see more information. As we can see, the assigned number is 1800, and below we have two fields that are mandatory, and a few other optional ones. Clicking one of the characteristics opens up a new page, and tells you what to add, and what format is expected. If in doubt, have a look at the example GAT files. Most have multiple profiles, and are well commented. An excellent reference to writing your own. Next we need to work on the hardware file. This is simple. For the time being, there isn't anything to do. Yet. We don't need to configure I2C, UART, or anything else for the time being, except for a GPO, which we'll do later on. We need a single entry, hardware, and then we close it, leaving it empty. Now for the fun part, development. Let's start simple and build up. First of all, I'm not going to plug in a siren or buzzer just yet. The radio board has two user LEDs, so we use those to build up. Let's start by turning on one of the LEDs when a device connects, and turning it off when the device disconnects. This is where we should sound the alarm. To write this application, we are going to need two things. First of all, we are going to need the BGM111 API reference manual that we saw earlier on in the series. We'll need this to know what functions are available and how to use them. Secondly, 
We are going to need the BGM111 Wireless Starter Kit User Guide. We only need one piece of information from here, the GPIO of the LED. That will be in Peripherals, Push Buttons and LEDs. There we go, Button 0 and LED 0 share the connection to GPIO pin PF6. Configure the pins as outputs to control the LEDs, GPIO pin set as active low. That's all the information we need. So, let's start. Luggage application. We need to catch the system boot event, so let's go to the API and have a look at system boot. Event system boot. Here is the BG script event. Copy and paste. Let's end that with end. What do we need to do during the system boot? Well, we need to configure the GPIOs, so let's see what we can do. This is going to be under API reference, hardware, Hardware commands, hardware configure GPIO. Perfect. Let's have a look at the BG script command. Let's copy this. Let's go back into our code and paste. We do not need the result, but we do need to go back and have a look at the parameters. Let's have a look at port. What do we need? Port, port index, where A equals 0, B equals 1. We are looking at PF, so PF equals 5. GPIO, what is that? GPIO, index of the GPIO pin on the port which this command affects. Well, we're looking at PF6, so let's write in 6. What do we need for mode? Mode is the pin out. Let's click on that. GPIO mode disabled, input, input, pull, push, pull, that's what we need. So we need value 4. And as for output, we need to go back here. Pin D out state. Well, it's active 0. Let's not turn the LED on immediately, so let's leave that as 1. Okay, now let's think about the events. We're going to have two events. We're going to have one when a connection is made, and a second one when a connection is closed. So let's have a look at the API reference. This is going to be under API reference, connection management for low energy. Perfect. This is not a connection command, this is a connection event. So we are going to be looking for connection closed, connection opened. Perfect. Let's start with opened. Copy and paste that into our code. Terminate with N. Back to the API. Connection closed. Copy the BG script event. Put it back into our code. End. Right. What do we need to know? When the connection is opened, we're going to turn the LED on. So that's going to be a GPIO right. Let's close this. Uh, that's going to be hardware. Hardware, hardware commands. That sounds good. Uh, configure GPIO on reset. Uh, stop I2C. Hardware right GPIO. Perfect. Let's copy this into our code. We don't need the result. Let's have a look at what port is. Port index A equals 0, B equals 1, same as before, F equals 5. Mask. Ah, this is different. Let's have a look. Bit mask which determines the pins this command is used to set. Uh, we're looking at pin 6 on an 8-bit, that's 0x40. So I'm going to write $40. Data. Well, it's active low, so when a connection is opened, I want the LED to turn on, so we're going to put 0. That should turn the LED on. Let's copy this. Paste it down here. What are we going to do? The connection is closed, I'm going to turn the LED off. So, right, PF, 0x40, I need to turn this back on. Let's copy and paste that. Perfect. We're not done yet. Not quite. There are two things we need to do first. Our application now reacts if somebody connects and if somebody disconnects. The only problem is, for the time being, nobody can connect because we haven't set up the parameters. Let's have a look at that. Once again, we're going to be looking at... It's, it's not hardware. It's going to be gener generic access profile, low energy. That's what we want. We need a command. We are going to be looking at set parameters. Data. No, it's the parameters we need. Let's copy that, 
And let's paste that into our code. This is going to be done in system boot, just after the GPIO configuration. We do not need the results. Set advertisement parameters, interval min, what is that? Let's have a look. Interval min, minimum connection interval, values in 0.625 milliseconds. Okay, calculator. Okay, so if I want to broadcast every second, that is going to be 1,600. Interval max. Interval max. Maximum connection interval must be at least equal or bigger than interval min. Well, let's put one second again. 1600. Channel map. What is that? Channel map. Advertisement channel. We need to advertise on all channels. That's the recommended value. So let's put in 7. One final thing to do. We need to set the mode. Again, that is going to be in caps, set mode. Configure the current Bluetooth no energy gap connectable and discoverable modes. Perfect. Let's copy and paste that. Let's paste that in. Once again, I do not need the result. Discover. What is discover? Discover. Discoverable mode. Uh, Discoverable using general discoverable mode 2. That is what I want. 2. Connection. How do we connect? Back to this and have a look at connect. Connectable mode. Uh, undirected connectable. That's what I need. So that is 2 again. 2. Well, you know what? We've just finished our first application. Well, we've hit the wrapping up point, so I'll stop here. In this episode, we've finally written our first application. I'll put a link to the source files on my GitHub in the description below. You can compile this and flash it to test it out if you want, or you can wait until next episode where I'll show you how to compile and flash our application and give it a spin. In the meantime, feel free to drop me a comment, I'll answer it as soon as I can. Don't forget to like the episode if you liked it, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye!